Mohan Lal and Jitu Joseph are back to bring us the old magic. Did it work? Stay tuned to find out. All right, guys, so I'm pretty happy because I just saw Nehru or Nero. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly, but I'm pretty happy because I finally got to see a Malayalam movie first day, first show. And if you're wondering why haven't I seen other movies first day, first show, well, because they don't air here in Australia. So I had a rare chance, a rare opportunity this time to actually go to the cinema and watch it, the first show that they basically played here. So yeah, it was fantastic. It was a great movie. I'm not going to hold the suspense any further. I absolutely love this movie. This was a great movie. I liked it so much and there's so much that I want to say about this movie. So I'm here to talk about it. So if you have seen it, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section because I'd love to interact with you and see what your thoughts were and if you agreed with me or disagreed with me or whatever comments you had about this movie. But to get started with, I will try and keep this non-spoiler-ish. But towards the end, I might go into some spoiler details. Just an FYI. But look guys, overall, this movie was just a thrill from start to finish. I start with sort of the storyline and structure a little bit. So the story is basically about an incident that happened to a blind girl and then basically Mohan Lal trying to prove her innocence. It's fascinating because what the movie does so well is that it really takes you on a journey to see how difficult it is to prove innocence and prove somebody is guilty. And this movie more than others, I would say, really takes you on that legal roller coaster more than others, I would say. <clears throat> Obviously, the two movies that came to mind for me because of just how recently I've seen them is one, Janagana Mana, which was also a courtroom drama in the second half. And the other one is Natan Keskoro. Two movies that have a lot of court cases in them, but this movie, unlike those movies, this is like rooted in the courtroom. Like I think 90% of this movie is in the courtroom. Those movies, I would say like almost less than 50%. Right, because Jana Ganamana, it starts off only at the halfway point that we go to the courtroom. And Natan Keskoro is like a bit of back and forth involving the court system. This movie is like a courtroom drama, as in you are in the courtroom essentially for the whole time. And if you're not in the courtroom, then you're basically in the house of Mohan Lal. You're in the, you know, premise of wherever they're doing research. Um, it's not so much outside of the courtroom, to be honest. So in that, this movie, if you are a lawyer then and you love law and you love um, courtroom procedurals, you will love this movie because I think it it really plays to that side of things more than others. Now, look, I can't speak on the accuracy on the courtroom procedures and stuff like that. I wish I would have Sonny, my co-host Sonny, Advocate Sonny, to talk to about this because he would have absolutely given so many details. But anyway, in terms of storyline and structure... This is probably the one part I really liked about this movie. The first half and even the second half I found, the storyline and structure just flows so smoothly. This was like, what, a two hour and a half movie, I think? And I'll be honest, I did not feel the length of this movie at all. There were some slight dips in sort of the pacing, I would say, but nothing so, nothing so substantial that I actually felt it impact the storyline or the pacing or my investment in this movie. I was very much invested in this movie from start to finish. I didn't really waver once at all because the whole way that they sort of, you know, they relay this court case is so fascinating to me because of basically the games that they're playing. The constant back and forth between Mohan Lal's character, Vijay Mohan, and Sadiq's character, whose name I forget and it's not been listed, um, as well as Priyamani's character. Um, the games that they're playing, the back and forth to sort of prove who is innocent and who is not, it does leave doubts in your head. Um, I would say, you know, the movie does a good job as to sort of letting you know who is innocent through a lot of sort of, I guess, a few instances. So we, as the audience, know who is guilty, I feel, the whole time in this movie. But it's so interesting to see how well the defense does to basically make it so it's almost impossible for, you know, Mohan Lal's character to really prove Sarah's innocence. So the storyline was so fascinating. I enjoyed every moment of it. It was not boring. It was not like, you know, I was scared because I had seen so much courtroom in this movie. I thought that is this going to be a bit dry. Is it going to be hard for me to keep along with this movie? Because, you know, sometimes just being in the courtroom, there's not enough drama in the movie. Is it intriguing enough? But I think you watch this on like an intellectual level because you are trying to digest this movie. Each sort of sentence is important as you're following along to try and understand the story, understand what 
the motives are behind each of the lawyers and what they're doing. So, I mean, that was probably my favorite part of this movie, just how well it flowed from start to finish without really much disruption. You want to talk about some performances? Let's talk about some performances now. Mohan Lal, people are going to say Mohan Lal is back. I personally never experienced the Mohan Lal dip, to be honest, guys. I am somebody that's pretty new to this industry. So all the Mohan Lal I have seen, <laughs> to be honest, is from his heyday. I've, I've, I've really only seen Mohan Lal from the basically 90s and 80s even. Aside from the Drisham series, I've not really seen much of Mohan Lal in a lot of those movies that have not been that successful. But to be honest, Mohan Lal, man, like, he was so spectacular in this movie. The thing that really impressed me more than anything else in this movie was essentially the fact that his delivery was so good and it's impeccable. I mean, this is something that he probably does as second nature at this point. But for a movie that's just in a courtroom, it demands so much from its core star performers right there's no action sequences there's no big song number there's no big dramatic scene that's playing out it's really just dialogue it's dialogue and then dialogue again and then dialogue again and then mind games <laughs> you know which g joseph does pretty well again and there are sort of quintessential g joseph traits in this movie i think especially in some of the ways he uses um you know i guess stories and then reverses them again we see that happen especially in one scene that happens and is done really well but I mean, to just speak on sort of some of Mohan Lal's like dialogue, like it's fantastic because there are some scenes when he just emotionally erupts and you just, it's like almost a standstill. <laughs> That's how sort of well he's sort of speaking and you're just taken away by him. You're mesmerized by him. You know, the screen presence is obviously going to be there. I would say in this movie, there's less jovial Mohan Lal. Like I see for some reason, everything Mohan Lal does always seems like there's a, there's like this levity and this joy in his presence, this comedic humor, even movies like Tan Matra, I remember, which is one of the most serious movies I have ever seen. There's moments of comedy in that in the first half and moments of levity. There's not really any of that from Mohanal in this movie. He's really just playing a straight laced lawyer, um, except for a few very small ones. And maybe I missed a few moments because of dialogue. But overall, man, like this is a very grounded performance from Mohanal. And he is playing like this, I guess, down on his luck, down on confidence kind of character. But yeah, he was fantastic. And I can't really speak about Mohan Lal by himself because the whole cast in this movie were just absolutely fantastic. I mean, and I have to start with maybe the star performer, to be honest, as much as I love Mohan Lal, but Anaswara Rajan playing Sara, basically the victim in this movie. Oh my God, did she knock it out of the park? She was fantastic. I mean, like, so she's playing essentially a blind woman without spoiling what the premise is about. But she's playing a blind woman and i like the theme of justice is blind and you're actually having a blind character who's gone through injustice so there's some you know i, I guess that's a clever thing to do by g2 joseph there but i guess sarah she was um fantastic in this movie i mean yeah really a standout like i mean the way she was emoting was so good like she was just so believable in what she was doing and this probably the second best example i think i've seen of somebody playing like a disabled character that comes to mind why i'm saying second best is because the person that comes to mind when i think of playing a disability is probably um the actress in the movie perambu um if you guys haven't seen that make sure to check that out but she was fantastic but this sort of mirrors that that sort of being disabled and playing that role now i'm not sure if she's actually blind no i just looked it up i don't think she's actually blind but you know i i can imagine how hard it would be to actually have a blind actress play this kind of role but she portrayed that role so well like i mean just shaking trembling traumatized everything she was doing was just fantastic and also i have to give special mention to sadiq as well like i mean as good as mohan lal was the reason why he worked so well was because you had a powerhouse performance from sadiq as well like he, he had to be that good for mohan lal to be as good as he was because it could not have been one-sided it could not have been sort of unbalanced and one shining the other they were just playing off each other so well and the mind games that they were playing against each other, you really felt they were on like level pairing. Um, you know, it didn't feel like Mohan Lal was a superior lawyer at all. It didn't feel like Sadiq was superior. And the one part I have to say about this movie that does really well, and I think it does better than Janakanamana, I think, because that was my one real critique in Janakanamana, was essentially the judge was in Janakanamana. He was just like, yeah, he wasn't the best judge. But in this movie... I think the judge was really good in that he was just he just wasn't there like he just felt like he was a neutral 
you know whereas he didn't feel like he was getting involved in the story too much he was sticking to the facts as much as you can in a dramatized you know courtroom drama so i really liked him i really liked sadiq i really liked this actress that played sarah um anaswara fantastic priya money was also really good um i got I, I had some questions as to why they sort of when they first did something with her character i was a bit confused as to why they were doing that at that point but it made sense later on to introduce us to her at that point so we can get her to come back later on so it made a lot of sense to have her there Jagadish, I love serious Jagadish. Like he's killing it with these dramatic roles, man. Like ever since I saw him in Rorschach being serious, and I just saw him in another movie that I just watched called Garudan, um, where he was also playing a really serious character. Again, he's knocking it at the park with these dramatic roles, guys. I'm so impressed by him. He's becoming like the go-to um sort of dramatic actor. And I love to see that progression from uh actor. So overall, man, I really like this movie a lot. There was a lot to like about it. The pacing was fantastic. Um, the story itself was fantastic. I was riveted from end to end. It is a great cinematic experience, I will say. It's great to see this in a crowd. Fortunately, I was with, you know, a lot of people. My cinematic experience was that the crowd was basically full. There were people in the front row in Australia, Melbourne. So if you're listening to this, people that distribute Malayalam movies to Australia, please get movies to Australia because there is a crowd for it like there's a crowd for it like this was jam-packed i'm telling you people want to see these movies um, and there's a huge malayalam community here in australia melbourne so it was just it was great to watch uh, there was a lot of people cheering when mohan lal's face was shown um a lot of sort of clapping throughout some of the scenes some of the powerful dialogue you know it brings sort of you know goosebumps now i'd only be fair if i talk about some of the criticisms i had of this movie guys and to be honest personally i don't have too many but there was one that really sticks out to me now look it's a courtroom drama there's not much that happens outside the courtroom you know it's not like john and where you have a whole first half where there's a whole crazy like you know incident that happens and then you replay it um it's really just in the courtroom so how would they make this movie appealing and how would they really draw the audience in the way i felt they did it was through music personally i felt this music was so over the top <clears throat> in that from basically the whole movie we just basically have a soundtrack a score going throughout the entire movie and it is so strong and it might have been because i'm watching this this in the cinema it's amplified even more but man did they really go heavy on this music and it really felt like the music you could listen to this you could take all the dialogue away from this movie you can basically watch the scenes and have the music playing on top and you would know exactly how to feel at every point i sometimes don't like when movies overuse that sort of tactic yeah it, I, I, I don't feel as an audience member i need to have that i would actually have appreciated more moments of silence uh, especially when he was mohan lal was delivering some of those epic speeches or some of the mind games he was playing it was really fantastic like i i, I think those could have just been done in silence but i think the music was a little bit over the top but hey that's my opinion i would love to hear from you guys i would love to know what you guys thought about this the other one that i think that is gonna this movie is gonna get a lot of criticism for is essentially now it's a g2 joseph movie so we all know that with g2 joseph i have seen three of his movies now i've not seen all his movies obviously guys but i've seen dushim one i've seen dushim two and i've seen kuman the thing that he likes to do so much is give you that twist you know that twist at the end the unexpected like oh my god we didn't see that coming like wow that blew us away you know so spoilers here guys a little bit um you know there's no twist ending in this movie there's no real twist there's nothing like oh you've seen it and now you're expecting something else to come no nothing like that it, it's really just straight laced the ending is what it is and i was okay with that to be honest because i do feel like i don't like to put directors into a box where they have to do the same thing over and over again when you do that kind of thing you get what happens to people like m like Shyamalan, who essentially after having such a breakout with his initial movie the sixth sense he basically tries to do twists in every movie he does like it feels like every movie he does has to have some kind of twist ending or some open ending or something for the crowd to crowd to interpret because it's become his signature you know i don't want that to happen to jitu joseph i don't want him to become somebody that always does the same thing over and over again as a creator that limits you that puts you in a box okay so i don't want that to happen to jitu joseph so i don't know if that's what people are expecting coming in while watching a jitu joseph movie I personally hope not because if it is then that's just not great so I'm fine with the no twist ending I think this movie ended 
on a really really good note i think it left exactly where it should and i was just appreciating that so that's really it guys i don't really have much criticism for this movie i really enjoyed it i don't know what the box office is going to say i don't know what critics are saying i'm intentionally not going on and seeing the general consensus because i like to give you guys my raw reaction and my real review and not have it influenced by other people you know i watch enough money island movies i watch enough movies in general to you know be able to make my own decision and tell you guys how i feel about it i'm gonna bring back the d scale um you know our, our old favorite d scale our sort of system we used to use a lot more than we do now to rate movies um but essentially where this would fall i would put this at a dynamite like this is a dynamite so a solid like eight out of ten i would say okay it's some somewhere along those lines it's probably going to be for me one of the better movies of the year if i was to pick like a top five of the year this movie definitely falls into top five like region you know is it number one probably not the best movie of the year there were some pretty great movies this year to be honest including 2018 which i think was yeah my favorite of the year but this movie's up there man i really enjoyed it and i would love to know what you guys thought so thanks a lot for listening and i'll catch you guys on the next one